Get ready for Sewing with Ease and Style next on Sewing with Nancy. This program is a kickoff of a three-part mini-series named Designed for Creativity. I'll be using one pattern and showing you seven style variations. The sewing is streamlined. The creative options are almost endless. First, I'll detail basic sewing skills on this classic jacket style. You'll learn zipper, collar, and sleeve techniques. Plus, you'll find that this pattern is so versatile that you can create a jacket or vest. Discover the joy of sewing next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is brought to you by Baby Lock, a premier line of sewing and embroidery machines, sergers, and accessories. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Madeira, superior quality threads from Germany, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Prim Dritz, the source for sewing and quilting notions, including products by Dritz, Collins, and Omnigrid. Amazing designs, an amazing variety of embroidery designs and software for any embroidery machine, including designs by Nancy Zeman. Koala cabinets from Australia, quality crafted, fully assembled sewing furniture, designed for maximum storage in minimum space. Rowenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing, the choice of professionals. And Nancy's Notions, discover the joy of sewing and quilting, a catalog filled with specialty notions, fabrics, and supplies. A good place to start is to look at the basic components of this jacket or vest pattern piece. Simple styling, easy straight seaming for the side seams, a simple collar. You'll see an exposed zipper in this style, but we'll also have some other options for you. There are four basic pattern pieces, a front, back, sleeve, and collar. Can't get much easier than that. So here I have the simple style of the front piece, the back piece. I'll be cutting two of all these, the collar of course, the sleeve and then the collar. The collar has both upper and under collar on one pattern piece. You'll be cutting on the fold of the fabric and when it's double you can see what a simple seaming will take place to create this collar. There are also facings, front facings. We also have facings for the sleeve hem and the lower edge hem. So with these basic pattern pieces, you'll have lots of options. But to start with the beginning, we're going to first put a zipper in this jacket. That's one of the first steps. To give the jacket front some stability where the zipper will go, I'm going to ask that you cut a strip of interfacing. We're using lightweight interfacing, a knit interfacing, because the jacket fabric in this instance is a, light, is a knit. It's a medium weight knit, has a very little stretch, but yet some stretch. Regardless if it's a knit or woven, I like to cut about an inch and a fourth to an inch and a half strip of fusible interfacing and place it on the wrong side of the fabric and fuse down. This will give support to that heavy separating zipper. Separating zippers come in standard lengths and the patterns are all designed to fit those standard lengths and here we have a separating zipper, one half of it is pinned to the jacket front. And I've started to pin, having a key, few key areas. The stop of the zipper, the very lower edge, needs to end 5 eighths of an inch, the standard width from the lower edge, and I'm pinning it 1 fourth of an inch away from the cut edge. Now, the surged edge is shown here, and that surged edge is almost a fourth of an inch, so I use that as a guideline. The reason that I use this a fourth of an inch guideline is that when sewing, then, 5 eighths from the edge of the fabric, your zipper teeth will be exposed, so that you need that little guideline. So just pin all the way up, and then stop the zipper tab, again, a little bit below, 5 eighths from the, t from the top. There's a heavy duty stop at the top. Here's a close up of using a zipper foot and just straight stitching down the front of the jacket to attach the zipper. On the second half of this jacket, we already have the zipper stitched and you just have to make certain that the stopping and starting point of the zippers are in the same place or their mirrored image. So just like that, a first step of the jacket is almost complete. The exposed zipper is put in. On this sample, I have the shoulder seams sewn together. 
then press the seams open, and then I'd work with the collar. The collar piece has interfacing as well. And to streamline the process, we've used a full fuse of the interfacing. In other words, cut the interfacing, the size, the exact size of the pattern, and fused it into place. Didn't do any trimming of seam allowances because we're working with a lightweight interfacing. Meet the collars, right sides, and the sewing will take place sewing the 5 eighths of an inch seam on both fronts to stitch down the fronts. On this next sample, I have done some trimming, grading the seam allowances narrower, trimming off a fourth of an inch or a slightly bit more, angle cutting at the corners. As I take this over to the ironing board, you'll see the two pressing techniques that I like to do for almost all sewing. And that is, first of all, press the seam flat, just as the way you stitched it, and then press it open. I always do this two-step pressing on almost all seams and then press open. And I'm pressing over a smaller pressing surface so that I can get the collar turned correctly, or press it the way it will be when it's finished, and then turn right side out. That two-step process will assure you that you'll have a very professional looking seam. Next, I'm going to take a little break and pin the collar to the neckline. It's always interesting to realize that when working with basic sewing skills, portion of your scale is the stitching, pressing, as well as trimming. You'll be doing almost equal amounts of all three areas. That especially is applicable to this jacket. As I mentioned, I was going to pin and finish working with this collar around the neckline. I have it half stitched to the neckline and just going to show you the second half of it. I'm matching the notches. I have a little nips at the shoulder seam notch or shoulder, yes, shoulder seam notch, and then pin it around the rest of the collar. There's one more little notch to match. Those notches, I just clip a little bit of the fabric so that I get those two areas to align. The collar is stitched to the neckline with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, a standard seam allowance, just a straight stitching. And as I come around to this second half of the collar, which I've already stitched, I'm going to do some grading. Grading is to eliminate all the bulk of the three seam allowances at this neckline so that you don't have a cliff, but rather a gradual downgrade decline. I always make the jacket or the portion that's going to be sandwiched the shortest, trimming about to a fourth of an inch. And sometimes I restitch the neckline seam because it's going to have the most wear and tear on it. So just trim this neckline. By the way, I did use red thread in here, not black thread, which I would do if this were not a sample. So you just trim away. And don't be afraid to trim because that will give the ability for the collar to lie flat. The inner collar, again, is tra trimmed. This time, just a slightly greater seam allowance. And this is bulky fabric, so it takes a little time to get in through all these areas. And then finally, the upper collar. And you can see perhaps how it's starting to grade. Now I just trim off a little bit. If you'd like, you can zigzag or surge this edge after trimming. And I have, on the finished jacket, we did the surging. So now this gradated seam has a, a very gentle feel to this and not a very bulky at all. So you've graded this seam line. And then you could press the seam allowances to the jacket. The facing is next. We have a facing to go around, or excuse me, not around, but down the front of the jacket. And I've pinned the facing. It's just a strip of fabric that has a fusible interfacing on it to the jacket front. And I pinned it from the jacket side so that I could re-follow, or I could follow the stitching line where I stitched in the zipper. This, this thread, the contrasting thread, is overstitched where I stitched in the zipper and also stitched across the top of the facing. Again, tr trimming is really important, especially where all these seams meet. Angle cut, trimming them out of play, trimming the bulk out of the area. And be aggressive here. Don't be timid when doing trimming. And again, if it's necessary, do some restitching the seams. I do the same trimming again, gradating down the front of the jacket. And I'll just kind of do a little bit at this point, and now maybe one more trimming. 
when you turn this right side out, you will find that the combination of grating, impressing, and straight stitching will give you the very sharp point at the, at the top of the collar. On my finished jacket, I've done one more row of stitching. That is to tack down the seam allowances to the jacket neckline. Just stitched it down into place with a straight stitch. Because this fabric is bulky, you can't really see or, or nubby, you can't see the stitching. A hand stitching would be the option, as well as hand stitching the facing down the front of the jacket. A simple way to work with a zipper and collar combination. The next step is to set in sleeves. Now the type of technique that you use to set in sleeves depends upon the style of the sleeve. I'd like to show you the two basic styles, a cap sleeve and a shirt sleeve. The cap sleeve is, is shown by this front pattern with a quite of a pitched cap area. This always needs the cap or the sleeve itself to be eased into place to fit the armhole. The other hand, the shirt sleeve, and that's what we'll be working with today, is cut quite differently. Notice that the slope of the mountain is much less curved. It really doesn't require as much easing as a traditional set-in sleeve. So since this is the style that comes with the pattern, that's what I'm going to show you how to work with. It's also knowing how to work with your sewing machine to ease without doing extra stitching. Here is a sleeve that has been stitched at the underarm, and I have the notch is marked with chalk or white pencil. Usually one notch is always the front of the sleeve, two notches the back of the sleeve, and the third basic marking is the cap. Those are the three areas needed. Those same notches or markings are always on the sleeve itself. And here we have a small sample to show this, and I have the two pinned together, the armhole as well as the sleeve. Here's the underarm of the sample, and I have one pin showing the front, and then here's another pin, and let me put two back there so that you know that this is the back of the sleeve, and then I have them stitched, pinned together at the cap. Now, it's important to notice this surged edge. That's the sleeve edge, and the non-surged edge is the armhole of the jacket. Notice the difference of the curves, outward curve for the sleeve, almost an inward curve, for the armhole of the jacket. When you have this two contrasting of curves, you always put the longer one, the outward curve, to the feed dogs. Now the feed dogs in the sewing machine help ease the fabric through, they kind of bite the fabric. So whenever you have one area longer than the other, make sure you put that area of the fabric next to the feed dog area itself. So let the machine do the work for you. I'm going to be sewing from the garment side and they're going to start on the left of the seam. The reason I'm going to do this is so that I can get this seam at the lower edge double stitched as we go along. So I'm going to start to sew at the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and kind of have to work your fabric around so that you're sewing flat. And I'm sewing the underarm seam. I had those seam allowances pinned flat. Get that little thread out of the way. And now I'm getting to the other notch, the single notch. I'll remove my pin. Now, this is the part that you let the machine do the work for you. The feed dogs will ease it. So notice again, here's this surged edge. Rather than having this surged edge lie flat, I'm just going to hold the fabric at a slight angle. And by stitching in this manner, by holding it upright, it will allow the feed dogs to bite more fabric and ease this into place. I'm just holding it at a slight angle. Now I'm going to reposition this and sew the second half of the cap. Again, the feed dogs are going to ease in the cap and holding the fabric at a slight angle. When I'm done, I'm going to be pressing the seam flat, just the way I stitched it, and then pressing the cap to the jacket itself. Now I'm coming around to the underarm seam, right where I started. So I'm going to move the seam over and stitch a fourth of an inch from the edge so that this underarm has a double seam. In the underarm area, I usually trim the seam allowances to the second stitching line. So in the underarm, it's been double stitched. In the cap, it has a single stitched, and that sleeve has been eased perfectly into place. This jacket variation has a simple yet effective design change. We brought what is traditionally on the inside, which is the facing, to the outside. 
Facings are designed to give support and a finish to an outside edge. In this case, they do much more. The decorative serge edge adds an instant trim-like finish. Here's how. Here's a close-up of that jacket, and we're able to do this because the fabric is quite reversible. It's another knit fabric where it has on the inside kind of the soft napped look and the outside a very definite knit look. So there, it's a tonal effect, not totally contrasting, but has a nice, but a nice enough accent between the two fabrics. The collar and the facings all are the other right side of the fabric, which is traditionally the wrong side. If you can keep all these right and wrong sides straight, you're doing well. Just know that you're going to be working with the opposite side of the fabric for the collar and the facings, which means rather than working with the fusible interfacing for the collar on the fuzzy side, you're going to place it on what's normally the right side of the fabric. Just switch your way of thinking about the fabric. The same goes with the facing. The fusible goes on the opposite side. Now the trim-like finish is what I'd like to detail next. And we're going to be adding the finish to the outer edge or the edge without the seam allowance. Here's my pattern piece and here's a traditional 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and this is just the edge that would normally would be turned under or zigzagged or searched. Well, I'm going to be surging that edge using a heavier yarn. This is an acrylic type of yarn in both the upper looper and lower looper. And in the needle, I've just used the traditional all-purpose serger thread. Do a test run first of all, testing to see how the stitch works. I have a three thread overlock stitch, a wide stitch. Notice I'm trimming off just a small amount of that edge. And when finished, it, this has a nice trim-like effect. The yarn had great coverage. So do this on all your facing edges, that edge that normally would be just tucked away on the inside. Now that you have the serging complete, I'd like to show you how to do the process of making that facing come to the outside. Since this jacket has a zipper, we're going to insert the zipper, but in the opposite manner. This is the right side of the jacket. The zipper is pinned to the inside of the jacket. And we use the same technique offsetting the zipper about by a fourth of an inch from the edge and top stitching it into place. On the opposite side, we have the zipper stitched to the inside of the jacket. My life is in samples because here in this next sample, we have the facing. Now this time the facing is placed the new right side of the facing is next to the inside of the jacket. And keep in mind, we always give you these instructions on the booklet that accompanies the program. So if you ever have a question, we'll give those to you, don't worry. But now the magic happens. I'm not really going to trim now, but just to show you, when you bring the facing to the outside, it's already finished. Now you'd need to grade and trim as I detailed earlier. But now the next step is to top stitch the facing to the jacket. In this sample, we have the facing going all the way around the jacket. The jacket front, the lower edge, has this facing edge. As you can see, it's mitered at the corner. With matching thread, I'm using contrasting threads that you can see a little bit easier. I'm going to be just straight stitching, sewing along the inside edge of the trim, the surged edge, just top stitching it down. Simple as that. And with this simple stitching technique, your outside facing is now on the inside and has a very attractive look. In this first episode of Design for Creativity, I showed you the basics of working with this jacket pattern. The zipper, facing, collar, and sleeve. A lot of straight stitching, grading, trimming, and pressing techniques as well. I hope you'll give it a try. Position your machine to match your sewing task. Koala's soft touch airlift system makes it easy. To move your machine from the smooth workspace of the flatbed, remove the custom cut insert and gently push your machine. Now in the free arm position, your machine is set to sew cuffs and other tight areas, as well as to embroider. One last push, and your machine is ready for storage. The airlift system makes sewing as simple as one, 
two, three. Taking measurements is easy with a wrap and stay tape measure manufactured by Prim Dritz. Wrap the tape around the area you wish to measure, then secure the tape in the built-in slot. Once you record the measurement, push the button to retract the tape. Because both sides feature metric and inch markings, the measurement you need is always on the side that's showing, allowing you to make conversions at a glance. This tape measure provides an accurate reading over any curve or round area. Experiment with your amazing designs embroidery cards, discs, and CDs by stitching out only portions of each design. Almost all embroidery motifs have multiple thread choices to create full color designs. You'll be quickly guided through the thread selections. Yet, there are so many options within one design. Choose, as I've done here, just the outline stitch. Rather than stitching the black outline, select another color. Here you see blue thread highlighting the outline of the embroidery, creating a totally different and versatile motif. Have you been searching for the perfect iron for travel, class, or your sewing room? The lightweight Rowenta Latitude Iron accommodates all these tasks. The compact design is ideal for small projects in your sewing room. For added convenience, keep the latitude next to your machine so you can press as you sew. The handle quickly collapses for easy storage. Rowenta's Latitude Iron proves that good things do come in small packages. Design for Creativity is a topic for this mini-series. Thanks for joining me. During the first program, I detailed the basics, the streamlined sewing techniques of a basic jacket or vest. In this segment, I'll show you how creative a basic pattern can be by taking a designer roll, changing a few seams, combining fabric. This jacket features the designer touches we call color splicing. The jacket and sleeves are seamed with a coordinating fabric, plus a simple yet dramatic fabric and trim accent was added. Discover the joy of being a designer next on Sewing with Nancy. I started out this series with the first episode working with this jacket, a very simple style, easy collar, exposed zipper, set in sleeves, and then showed you one other variation, but today we're really going to redesign the jacket just by simply adding some horizontal seams to the jacket and doing some few other changes. There isn't a zipper. The front edges just meet together with loops and buttons. But the main design change is having a seam at the lower edge, some trims, both on the front, the back, and the lower edge of the sleeves. The collar, as you'll soon see, is also slightly changed. It's the same collar piece as you just saw, but we've treated the collar to create a tunnel in the collar. And with the simple collar style, it's very easy to work with. Here's the process. First, some simple changes to the pattern piece. Since we don't have a zipper or a closure at the front, rather that the front edges just meet together, the yellow tissue paper shows that I've trimmed off the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance from the front of the jacket. Now to this front piece, we're going to make a few more design changes, and this is where I mentioned you're going to become the designer. To get the horizontal seam, simply meet the cut edge of the front piece as well as the back piece. And I'm just showing it to you on the front piece. Do the same to the back. Meet it to the underarm cut edge. Increase. This magically, or I guess not magically, but evenly distributes the design, having one-third of the jacket and two-thirds of the jacket, a good design proportion. From this pattern piece, you can cut a sec separate pattern pieces so that you have seam allowances. The lower front is from the cut edge to that fold plus a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. As you might guess it, the, the upper front has the same length as the original pattern but just adding a seam allowance. So it is slightly different, just a little bit. Now the sleeve, we'll need to do some changes to the sleeve as well. We found that just doing some simple folding didn't give us the right proportion. So to get the right proportion, we tested all sizes and simply measured six inches from the finished hemline. Six inches from the hemline, draw a line perpendicular to the grain line. And you're going to be cutting again two pattern pieces. But a tissue could make another lower sleeve, just adding a seam allowance again, and an upper sleeve. And that's all designers do, or change the seams. And that's what we've done here. Worked with the basic piece, but added two horizontal seams to the front pe pattern pieces and to the sleeve. I should say three. We're also going to add it to the back. 
we have some trim on our jacket or on our finished jacket and that trim can be made really any size that you'd like because it's going to be applied to the pattern piece itself. I'll show you in our sample. Here we have the jacket front, just one front and then you'd have a second front as well as a back and here's the sleeve pattern. We used a chenille corded fabric for the top, a linen for the lower portion and to create trim we cut two and a half inch strips of an accent color and two inch strips of the navy, several of these, folded them in half so that I had a finished one inch strip. Down the center of, or down in the back, on the back of this accent strip, fuse some, a stabilizer, an iron-on stabilizer, or just use any type of your favorite stabilizer, and decoratively stitch down the center. This is just one option. Here's a close-up of just take your time and then choose a stitch to your liking and stitch down the center of the strip. If necessary, you may want to mark the center so you can follow along easily. Then remove the excess stabilizer and I'll remove portions of it. You can take all of it off, of course. You can make this trim any size you'd like because you're simply going to place it on the lower edge of the sleeve or the lower edge of the jacket in this instance. The raw edge of one of these fold sections will meet the cut edge and the second one on top. You're framing that decorative stitch and stitch into place. Now this seam is going to be covering the raw edge, but to cover the other raw edge, just find some coordinating trim and top stitch, just straight stitch it into place. So you'll be stitching the accented lower panel to the upper panel for the sleeve front, or excuse me, the jacket front, jacket back, and both sleeves. And now it's time to do some other decorative accents to this jacket. The accent feature that I was talking about is the collar. I don't always think of a collar as an accent piece, but in this instance we're going to change the shape of the collar that we worked with in the first episode of this series to a tunnel collar. Here's the collar piece. So it was a double collar, upper and under collar made in one. Fold wrong sides and stitch the center front seams. Notice there isn't any interfacing here. It's just the fabric weight itself. We don't need that fabric to be interfaced because of the way it's going to be treated but you're going to put the collar on the jacket in the same manner. Just meet the collar, the underside of the collar, the under collar to the jacket and pin around the neckline and stitch the collar to the neckline. On this sample I've done some grading of the seam allowances. Changing the seam allowance width so that the jacket is the most narrow, then the medium width of the inner collar and then the seam allowance of the outer collar the widest approximately three-eighths of an inch wide if you're done. But you don't have to measure, just trim three different widths. We're going to eliminate the facings and instead of having a facing to this edge, we have bound the inside with bias fabric. Cutting a navy fabric that we used on the lower edge of the jacket, about two inches wide, two and a half inches wide, the choice is yours, cut it on the bias. And I'll show you what to do with this. I always think bias trim is a really nice designer feature and it gives a very clean finish. The bias trim folded in half, the raw edges are met to the cut edges of the jacket, of the collar area. And I'm going to pin it from the jacket side. It's going to go over the edge of the neckline. And then restitch that neckline seam, attaching attaching the bias trim to the neckline. I'm just restitching that seam around the edge. And I have it already halfway stitched, so I'll stop at the center back. You'd need some pressing at this point, but right now I'm just going to finger press. Finger press the bias trim over the seam allowance to encase it so it's enclosed. On this end of the collar, at the neckline, I have stitched it down into place. You can hand stitch or edge stitch by machine. Since this fabric is rather nubby, it could handle the machine stitching. And what a nice finish on the inside, just by cu cutting a bias strip and finish the edges. Now to make this tunnel collar, fold the collar in half, meeting the folded edge to the neckline seam. And after you have 
pinned it in place all the way around the edge, simply edge stitch the collar down. And that's all we did to create this tunnel collar effect on the finished jacket. Just stitched, straight stitched. The tunnel needs a cording. I don't always have cording at hand that matches what I'm working with. So I make my own by using the bobbin, and almost all bobbins have a little extra hole at the, the edge, and I've placed a cording or a little lasso through that bobbin edge and cut yarn or decorative threads. I'm cutting, I've cut two lengths and cut it four times the length that you need. Now, this isn't going to create a very long length. It's going to create a relatively short one, but it'll give you the concept. So I've, these two yarns have been placed through the lasso and I'm pinching the ends together. And I'm going to hold the threads, yarns up straight and wind the bobbin. But I'm not winding the bobbin, I'm just twisting the yarn. And when, it's, when the yarns have been gently twisted together, I'm going to fold it in half a second time. That's why you need four lengths. And I'm going to pinch the ends to the lasso. Now, where my right finger, index finger is, it's just going to twist. It's twisting on itself. And as I cut this off, you'll see this nice cord. This is a heavy cord, and it will stay twisted. Now, this wasn't very long, as I mentioned. You may be eight to 10 feet away from your sewing machine. Have someone else start it for you and, let, and work kind of in tandem, but it creates interesting cording, using not only for the jacket, the tunnel collar of the jacket, but you could also use it for the button loops that we have right here. We pinned some button loops, put some button loops on before finishing that edge. Speaking of that edge, how to finish it, let me just work on this sample. It's like binding a quilt, binding an edge of a wall hanging. Cut a three inch crosswise strip of fabric. Fold the ends down, the short end down, and fold it in half. We're working with a lot of straight little strips today. And meet this strip to the front edge. If you recall, I did some trimming of that jacket front, re eliminating that front seam allowance. Now I'm going to sew only a small portion of this for you. Sew this binding to the front of the jacket with about a fourth of an inch seam allowance. A lot of straight stitches. And now some more pressing would be needed. Press the seam allowance, or press the binding, toward the front edge to cover it. Let me take out this pin, so, it'll, and then wrap that binding around the edge. On the inside, you can hand stitch, or again, you can straight stitch it into place, depending how you'd like to have this finished. So with some creative uses of fabric, interesting trims, interesting use of the collar, you can change that basic jacket into a designer jacket. Use the same pattern to make a quick change from that casual jacket that I just featured to this more dressy style. The variation showcases synthetic suede and the creative accents of suede punching. Add a few accents or add many. Remember, you're the designer. This jacket features many accents. It has several accents of the suede punching. On synthetic suede, you can punch through with the leather tools and the fabric will not ravel either down the front where we used a light green suede or the jacket front of black suede. You can see this filigree design in the, in the inside or around the edges. Wearing a light top, light colored top would certainly showcase this interesting effect. Or if you just want to, just do the facing itself. The jacket fabric is a knit, a coordinate knit for the sleeve and the jacket back that have the same colors that we've chosen for the suede. What I'd like to detail now is working with the punching of the suede. The suede is for sure going to be used on the facings, and you can buy a fourth of a yard of suede, an eighth of a yard of suede, and still have a great accent. Since suede doesn't ravel, we're going to kiss the seams. In other words, butt the seams together of the front facings. I'm going to turn under the facing seam allowance of the front as well as the collar band. Just eliminate those to cut out the facing pieces so that later on we'll just simply zigzag or decoratively stitch those seams together. Otherwise you cut out the facing the size that is listed on the pattern piece. 
I talked about kiss seams, and I'm kind of going ahead a little bit, but I just want to show you where those seams have been kissed. We simply met the edges and then zigzag together or used a feather stitch so that there isn't, extra, there isn't any bulk in this area. But first of all, the punching. For the punching, we're going to be using a pattern. Within the pattern comes the design, so you don't have to design it yourself, using three different shapes of the leather punch tool, a teardrop, a circle, and a leaf design. And you transfer these designs onto a Templar or plastic quilting uh, template sheets and punch out the design using the tools. A detailed design, a little design, all or part of it, the choice is yours. On the wrong side of this facing, I have transferred the design onto the fabric. And then we'll simply do the punching. This is a great way to eliminate some frustrations because you simply work on a hard surface, use a mallet, and punch. This is a simple process. It does take a little bit of time, but you can s soon see as I punch out just portions of this really how simple it is. Now you may find, as probably I'll have here, you'll have to use the scissors to get some of the edges out. We'll find out. This one is perforated there. Let's see, one more. And We'd have to cut this little one off. So you may find a few areas that you were not able to punch. So this is just a portion of the design right now. So after you have the facings punched, the jacket punched if you'd like, then simply meet the facing to the top of the jacket front. Now this, these are both suede. Before doing this, you have the option of scalloping the edge of the suede using a scallop scissors or a rotary scallop. Sim easily cut and evenly as possible around the edge. And take your time to do this so that you have a nice even amount. And that's how it gets this simple edge. Place it on top of your fabric and top stitch. Now the outer edges have been stitched as well. And you can see that we've just top stitched the outer edge about a 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Since both of these fabrics are suede and they're not going to ravel, now again, cut. And take your time because you can't uncut this. And see what a nice edge this gives? And I'm going to do the same around the neck edge. Now again, this is if we have two suede fabrics. And wow, what a fast way of finishing that edge. And I think I have a little bit too much fabric here, so I am going to gently scallop. There we go, that looks better to me. Scallop that off so it's very even. Now if you would just like to use only a facing that's of suede and the jacket front of a traditional fabric, I'd like you to meet the suede to the inside of the jacket and sew a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, which I have sewn here. And then simply wrap the suede to the right side. But take some pressing, and because of pressing the suede would require working with a press cloth, take some time to press the suede perfectly flat. And then do some edge stitching, stitching on the edge of the fabric and top stitching down the center. This is the technique we used of adding a suede cuff at the lower edge of the sleeve. We met the suede facing to the inside of the jacket and wrapped it to the underside. And with these simple techniques, you can add the elegant accent of synthetic suede to the outer edge. One of the most creative parts of sewing is combining different fabrics. In this particular jacket, we have synthetic suede, plus for the back and sleeves, we have a knit fabric. It's interesting to see how a variety of fabrics can work together. Easily combine embroidery designs by simply touching the screen on the Baby Lock Elagio embroidery and sewing machine. Begin by selecting the embroidery edit function. 
select a design from one of the built-in designs, or a design from a memory card or disk. Add a second design, this time a monogram. Reposition the designs right on the screen. Then, simply begin to embroider with the touch of a button. Clearly, combining designs is a streamlined process. Did you ever wonder what the difference is between a straight and micro serrated edge? Ginger explains that the straight edge shears has carefully polished points and is designed for all dressmaking needs. The micro serrated edge, however, features fine gripper-like teeth that easily grasp slippery fabrics such as silk and rayon. Also, the micro serrated shears has slightly blunted points to prevent snagging on finer fabrics. Whichever blade you choose, you can be sure of a clean cut even through many layers of fabric. Looking for a spool that feeds smooth and even, locks thread ends, and eliminates tangles? Madeira machine embroidery thread spools are designed with just that in mind. First, thread is straight wound instead of diagonally to allow for smooth feeding. Second, both the bottom and top of Madeira's exclusive locking spools pop up, providing access to the thread end, then pop down to lock thread back into place. Finally, a wide shape eliminates the drop-off and tangle problems associated with elongated spools. It's time to discover the joy of sewing. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. This is the third episode of my mini-series on Design for Creativity, where I'm showing you design and fabric variations on a simple jacket or vest pattern. In this program, I'll begin by showing you how you can make a detachable collar. It's a design modification which provides flexibility. The collar shown is velveteen, plus I'll also show you how to make a full collar variation. Get ready to be creative next on Sewing with Nancy. It's relatively easy to change a collar from being attached to detachable. You have to start off with making it detachable by simply making a little extra change to the collar, adding a band to it plus some button and buttonholes. You can change the jacket style by unbuttoning it and wearing it without a collar. Or the other option would be to add another version working with a faux fur and button this on for a very evening look to the same jacket. So a lot of flexibility with this one pattern. First of all, the velveteen collar and how to work with this. We have added interfacing to the velveteen collar. And since this is a stretch velveteen, I've chosen an interfacing that has the same characteristics. It has a lot of stretch. Now with velvet, velveteens, and satins, using fusible interfacing can be kind of a challenge. Notice that I have a terry cloth fabric, and I'm really just lightly touching the iron to the interfacing. I'm not pressing, I'm just gliding it over. You're not going to fuse it on very firmly, just so that it stays long enough for you to do the sewing of the side seams, and then the interfacing will be caught in the fabric. So touch it very lightly, just like a little kiss on the, on the cheek is the way you're going to touch your iron to the interfacing. This is the same traditional sewing technique as we showed you earlier in this program, just stitch the side seams, which really end up being the center front, I should say, of the collar, and turn right side out. And then you're ready to hold this aside to, until the time I put the neckline trim on. Let me show you how to work with the faux fur. You only need a small amount of fur, enough for just one upper collar. And we've chosen the pattern that has just the upper collar. The pattern will tell you to cut two of this. Actually, you're just going to cut one. And working from the wrong side, the knitted side of the faux fur, make sure that the fur is petted down, that you will be outlining it with chalk. We've outlined one half of the collar, then at the center back, flipped it over, and outlined the second half of it. Now cutting. Cutting a faux fur is uh, a little bit different than cutting fabric you're not going to cut the fur at all. Simply use a small scissors and the tip of the scissors cutting the backing. And the fur will just kind of peel away without having to shed, too much shedding around the collar. So then just snip along, and this will take a little time, but you're just snip and then spread the fur apart. That's all there's to it. There's a lot of bulk with this fabric, so rather than mitering corners or turning corners, we're going to eliminate the corners. On each corner, I'm going to have you measure, and I'll find my little measuring gauge. Measure from the corner an inch and a fourth. 
You may wonder why an inch and a fourth from both edges. Well, that is double the seam allowance width and place a piece of tape an inch and a fourth across that diagonal. On the next sample, across that diagonal strip, I've cut, and this is, we're cutting off the corner. This will allow me to press, finger press, not with an iron, press the seam allowances up the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then easily hand stitch. We have bright pink thread here just to hand catch the seam allowances. You would use black thread, and that's how you finish the three outer edges of your fur collar. Now both colors are ready, whether it's velveteen, satin, which I didn't show you, uh, and faux fur to add a neckline trim. Not out of bright blue, of course, but this is for contrasting purposes. It's cut on the bias, so it's cut on the diagonal, three inches wide, and has a little interfacing attached to this. You can simply fold or meet, first of all, let's meet, the cut edge of the binding to the cut edge of the fur. I'm going to reach down and find my original collar, fur collar, and show you that when sewing to the fur, I like to use a zigzag stitch, not a straight stitch. That will make that seam a lot less rigid. With the fur, it works a little bit better. Stitch it to the edge, and if you'd like, you could trim down your collar to only having a fourth of an inch seam. It really isn't that critical. Fold under the seam allowance, a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance of the free edge of the binding, wrap it to meet the seam, and edge stitch or hand stitch, the choice is yours. We also did finish each front edge. The next step is to sew buttonholes. You saw earlier how I had the buttonholes or this collar attaching to the jacket. We had five buttonholes, one at each front, at the shoulder seams, and at the center back. And you do this on all of your collars. So this is one variation that you could easily make to this simple jacket pattern. Another option is to look at the binding that's down the front and around the edges. In the second program of this series, I detailed working with a trim using a linen fabric to trim the outer edge. Here we've chosen that same velveteen fabric to trim the edge. You've used the same concept, but let me just give you a quick refresher course. You're going to trim away the seam allowances of the front, the neckline, and also the hem, where you can just press up the pattern seam allowances. So you're not going to have any seam allowances in this area. And then, if the fabric is lightweight, as we uh, have experienced with this fabric, it's a lightweight knit, you may want to consider meeting your facing. You keep using your facings. Meet it to the jacket, all, wherever the facing is required, meeting wrong sides. The binding is again cut three inches wide and folded in half, and then we basted the edges, edges together, and meet to the right side of the jacket. Stitch with a fourth of an inch seam, and then simply wrap this again to the underside and hand stitch. Notice that we have curved the front. Rather than having a mitered corner at the top, another option would be to curve it at the top as well as the lower edge. Here it's been curved. This will give you another option to this jacket, rounded corners or square corners. Now let's explore more options for adding accents to the facing, bringing the facings to the outside and choosing from a variety of edge finishes. This jacket features a simple finish, a clean finished edge. It's an ideal way of turning an ordinary style into an elegant style. Plus, the facing provides a great palette to showcase a dynamic closure. This jacket pattern has lots of flexibility when it comes to these facings. Rather than having them tucked on the inside, having them exposed on the outside is a way of dealing with creativity or adding creativity. We've added an interesting alpine type closure at the top and just have that simple facing going all the way around the lower edge, the sleeves, etc. Notice that we have a seam on the diagonal where the facings meet. That's the way the pattern is designed, and it's included in the instructions that come with today's program. And I'll be giving you special detail how to work with this area. But first, the facings. This is a simple option, having a clean finished edge. And since I have a knit fabric that we've chosen for this facing, and we want it to be very accurate to have the facing the same width all the way down, you'll see on this sample some 
basting stitch, it's a hand running stitch just at the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance which will allow me to follow along that line and then the inside of the facing normally the side that would be tucked underway we're going to turn under the edge and again we did a little hand basting so that when it comes the time to stitch it down it's just prepared in the right manner it's the right width you're going to be sewing this facings together they'll be a mitered edge it's already sewn for you, or cut for you all you have to do is follow the seam allowance and since you have pre turned under the edges you'll have a clean finish in this area and you'll see this come to light in just a few minutes some other options you may want to consider for the inner edges and how to finish them. For a casual look, this is a nubby sweatshirt fleece. We've used some stretch lycra, lycra binding used on fleece, polar fleece, Nordic fleece. Stitch to that inner edge, a fourth of an inch seam, and then wrap it to the underside. And this sample shows it pinned. Leave it at pinned at this point. In a few minutes, I'll be stitching it down. For a fabric accent trim, this trim of an accent color was cut an inch and a fourth wide and folded in half as you can see and then stitched to the edge just with a narrow little seam allowance and then press that fabric edge forward and then you have a fabric accent. So these are just three options that you could consider. Then attaching that facing to the jacket is what's next. And I'm going to show this to you on the, on the sample. Now we worked with a knit fabric that had some stretch that we didn't want to have too, have it too stretchy. So in a contrasting fusible interfacing, normally I would use black, but for you to see, we've used ivory, fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric. Then when working with the facing, you're going to work from the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the facing, and pin the facing to the jacket, and this is just a portion of a sample, but you pin the two together and stitch on the outer edge. Again, right side of facing, wrong side of jacket. And it's going to be flipped forward. This next sample features dark interfacing fused to it, so it's going to look just a little bit different, but it's been stitched, the facing has been stitched to this area. Pressing is really critical. Press the seam flat, just the way it's been sewn, and then press it open. Even though it's not going to have the seam pressed open when it's finished, it will make turning that facing go more smoothly if you take this next step to press open the seam. Then a little trimming will be needed, grading the seam allowances, varying the widths. And one I trim off about half the width and the other a smaller portion. And I will cut more later. Just cut this off. But then you simply meet the facing to the right side of the jacket and pin. You can see my basting stitches line. And then edge stitch, either by hand or by machine, just catching that facing into place. Now we have two other options to show you how to do the finishing. And this has the fabric trim along the very edge. The facing has been put onto the sample, brought forward just the way I detailed it. But then to stitch the facing down into place, stitch in the ditch, stitching in the well of the seam to hold that facing into place. The same option would take place with the sweatshirt fleece, with that lycra binding. You can see a much beefier, casual binding. Again, stitch in the well or the ditch of the seam to hold the facing down, and now you have creative options for your facings. Embroidery provides the next creative element for the vest version of our simple jacket. We chose an embroidery design with two thread changes to cascade down the front of both sides of the vest. The key to using embroidery is design placement and the treatment of the fabric in the embroidery hoop. Two of the guidelines that I'd like to share with you. Here's a close-up look of our vest. You can see the design is simple. Actually, there are two patterns, two different designs, the larger one being in the corner of the vest, lower corner, two thread changes. And to get the placement correct, we like to make a little pattern. How detailed you'd like to make it is kind of up to you. Mark on the jacket front the facing placement. Since that facing came to the front, just like I demonstrated a few minutes ago, we need to mark where that finished line of the facing will end up. So the pattern piece has the clean finish turned under, and then I'll simply meet it to the jacket front, or you could measure and then mark, the choice is yours, but just mark a placement, front, neckline, as well as the hem. Now here's the optional part to make a pattern. But since we have so many embroideries on this jacket front, we did make a pattern. 
using a template, using, first we stitched out a sample embroidery and then traced it on a Templar quilting template and then with a tissue paper and marking pen drew along the designs, alternating and flipping. To place this design in the lower corner, I simply would match my template to the pattern, move away the pattern, and position the template. Now, to put the fabric in the hoop. Really, I don't like to put the fabric in the hoop too often. I'd rather hoop the stabilizers you found on Sewing with Nancy, rather than hooping the fabric. That way, you're not going to leave an imprint on the fabric, and you can have your fabric cut to size and not worry about the size of the hoop. We have a huge hoop here. In the hoop, we've placed a stabilizer that is sensitive to water that makes this adhesive, makes it adhesive after it has some, just a little bit moisture applied and gets sticky. Then you can apply your washable fabric to this area. You notice that we have one of the embroideries already positioned there and already stitched. So the one I'm going to stitch for you is going to be the next one on, on line. So I'll simply match my template and whisk away the pattern. You might want to double check that placement. Might have moved a switch. And then tape the template into place. And I'll show you how to do the stitching. It's now time to position the embroidery so that I'm going to be sewing in the right spot according to my template position. I'm going to put the memory card in the machine and wait a few seconds for it to bring it up and select the design that I need. And the design I have found on my little notebook here, I'm just going to push the button for my design and as it comes up, I can see that it's the mirror image of the position of the template or the design on my fabric. So I'll just do a little changing here and hit the mirror image button and now the image on my LCD screen matches the image of my template. But the needle is not in the starting position. As I mentioned, we made our own templates and in past programs I've given you many ways of making your own templates and we placed, just outlined the design and placed a paper punch at the starting spot of the needle so I could get this lined up exactly and just move the needle until it's at the right starting spot. And I double check it, I have to back up a little bit, and one stitch to the right, or left I should say, and I think I'm in the right spot. Before starting to sew though, I have one layer of stabilizer in the hoop, and in some fabrics that's enough. This is a knitted suede, it's yardage suede, it's not a very heavy fabric. So to give this fabric some additional stability, I'm just going to insert another layer of stabilizer underneath this whole length. And I like to do this many times after I have the stabilizer in the hoop, just to have it free floating. Because soon it will be attached. I'll lower the presser foot and then just begin to sew. I will be in the right position and just hit the start button. Let me just do a little clipping of the threads here and then we'll just do some more sewing. And let the machine stitch away. Now in some fabrics you may find that you'd like to put a stabilizer on the top, a clear water soluble stabilizer, but I always do a sample test on the fabric first and I found that I didn't need that on this particular fabric. It'll just take a little bit to stitch and you'll find too with your sample stitching to make sure you have the right color combinations. Sometimes I stitch two or three to make sure I have the right color thread to go with the fabric. We take another look at the finished garment you will see that all the designs down the front kind of cascade and they reverse positions. We have to mirror image and then flip. And you'll just have to rotate on your screen using your design. After you've done the embroidery, then it's important that you remove the stabilizer from the underside of your fabric because you'll have to use a tearaway stabilizer and then just tear away that stabilizer so that it's not included or left in the fabric. You might want to mention though, I used an embroidery thread and rayon embroidery thread on the top and a lightweight bobbin thread underneath as not to have a lot of buildup underneath. It's a simple process. Thanks for being with me during this three-part series on Design for Creativity, where I used one basic pattern piece and showed you seven different options. 
Keep in mind that that pattern is included in the reference material that goes along with this three-part series. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy has been made possible by grants from the following companies. Baby Lock, For the Love of Sewing, a premier line of sewing and embroidery machines and sergers. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Madeira Threads, because creativity is never black and white. Prim Drits, the source for sewing and quilting notions. Amazing Designs, embroidery solutions for any embroidery machine. Koala Cabinets, designed with maximum storage using minimum space. Roenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing. And Nancy's Notions Catalog, discover the joy of sewing and quilting.